Welcome to CEO.ca, the leading community for investors in junior resource and venture stocks. My name is Amrit Gill and joining us this morning is Ivan Bevic, Director, Chair, Co-Founder and CEO of Copper Nickel Resources. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Day two of PDAC. What are you looking forward to uh, with this year's conference? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a fascinating time for us. Very pivotal time on a project we've waited almost a decade for to come online so we can drill in Southern Peru and everything's happening right as we enter this conference. So it's mm -hmm. been an incredible conference for us so far. Had some great meetings. There's a lot of great energy with Gold's recent move to a record close on spot on Friday. So it's, it's a really good timing. It's been a really good conference so far and, and things are going to be exciting for us in the, in the coming months. Yeah. Well, let's begin with an elevator pitch for our viewers. Sure. So, um, you know, my career started as, uh, as an investment advisor buying mining stocks during the dot-com era. I worked with the gentleman who found six major mines around the world and uh, learned a lot from him about what it takes to go find a major mine. Mm -hmm. Met a partner. We found 5 million ounces of gold in Ghana, West Africa. The mm -hmm. share price went from 10 cents to $9. We went to do it again. We went to Mexico. We had found, uh, drilled 100 great holes and sold it to Agnico Eagle for almost $205 million. And then we started a company called Orin where we spent $125 million from 2015 to 2020 with some incredible geologists from Newmont. Then we went out to look for some of the world's largest discoveries. Uh, that company found gold, copper, and silver opportunities. And at the end of COVID or this first year of COVID 2020, we decided to split the company in by the asset choice, gold, silver, and copper, hence T's. And this company, Copernico, was born out of that company there. And, and at the time when we did the split, Orin traded at $320 million market cap. And this was a primary asset driving that, but it needed a drill permit and social access on its project in Peru. And that took three years to achieve. And we finally got the social access in November. And now we're about to get first drill permits. Um, this opportunity is an analog to Las Bombas, the first drill target. That's the eighth largest copper mine in the world at a time where copper is going into deficit in the next 18 months. And uh, it represents incredible grades and incredible scale, opportunity for both scale and grade. And everything we're going to target is from surface, which is incredibly rare. The advanced nature of the project, which gives us so much confidence, is that the, um, the grade is over half percent copper, 100 to 200 meters plus on the surface. It has incredible gold grades. You know, we've trenched 50 meters plus of almost two grams gold. And it's something that's never been drilled before by any other mining company. We went outside the box here and we found the extension of one of the most prolific mining trends in Southern Peru and in the world. Mm -hmm. And now we'll get access for the first time to drill it. So that's what's in front of us. And that's the story behind Copernicus Metals. Oh, lots going on behind the scenes as well with some new additions to the board. So tell us about your team and the experience they bring as well. Sure. Um, you know, big part of this business is your ability to find things, your technical team and whatnot. Um, first off, we have an incredible culture. We have grown as a company. We have an incredible SVP of corporate development in Peru who's led us through the permitting, through the social access. And he's a great geologist, but uh, Keenan Jennings. And if you don't know him, he was the recent head of exploration for BHP Mining, the largest mining company in the world. Uh, he had been familiar with Sombrero. He actually mapped Las Bombas 20 years ago, the eighth largest copper mine in the world. That's an analog and it's very close by our actual targets. And he was pursuing us with BHP for a few years and so were several other majors, but he retired from BHP before we had social access. And he joined our board a month ago and he invested into the company. So in the exploration business, when you're looking for world-class mines and it takes a while to get to drill them, you, be, you start to get really biased about your perspective. And the best way to remove bias is to get third-party points of view. Mm -hmm. um, the major mining companies that have followed this project that we're talking to on a regular basis was an incredible endorsement. But having somebody of Keenan's caliber recently come out as the head of exploration at BHP and, and join us and invest into the company was the, the ultimate. Um, he's been an incredible complimentary addition to the team. It's, it's opened up our strategy, both technically and corporately. And, uh, and so I'd say a lot of momentum is happening right as I sit here with you at PDAC, as we're about to go and drill one of the most exciting copper gold exploration projects I'm aware of in the globe right now. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit more about Sombrero. So Sombrero is a, is a scar and pore free target. And as I said before, it's an analog to Las Bombas. Uh, to give you context there, if you don't know Las Bombas, it sold for $7 billion in 2013 when copper was 325 a pound. Um, when we compare them, same rock composition as Las Bombas, 
And it's the same age of intrusions that formed Las Palmas as our targets were formed. We've done extensive age dating and the same minimalization, grades and style, everything else. So there's so many direct analogs to Las Palmas and and that's our first target. This is the first 5% of our, our significant land package. And so, um, yeah, I know we're excited. We're excited to go after it. And I think the biggest thing that Sombrero offers, it offers grade and it offers scale from surface. And I think mm-hmm. those three words are not being seen anywhere anymore because a lot of the ones that have exist- existed like this have been drilled and found and discovered. Um, it's something so rare that it could be a district of multiple big discoveries. And it's just time to go drill it. Mm-hmm. What are your plans to go public? So we are uh, we are now with a social access agreement that we achieved in November, and we are completing our drill permits in the next few weeks. We are going to uh, do a listing financing at the end of March, and that will be the last requirement to list the company. Uh, we are going to raise at least 18 months of working capital with at least two phases of drilling. That's our plan. And then uh, it's up to the, the TSX is where we're applying to list the company, and we hope to be trading sometime in, in April and drilling within a few weeks of trading. So it's gonna be an exciting launch of the company and the catalyst is gonna be drilling. We will become a drilling company, you know, per se, because we've done all the pre-drilling work. We have numerous targets. And so now we will, the very disciplined measured approach, we will start to drill and see if we have the next Las Bombas. Mm-hmm. What sets you apart from the competitors? I would say the, um, the scale of the opportunity and the grade of the opportunity I'm a big investor across the entire sector. I'm a huge exploration enthusiast. I love big risk and big projects. I'm not aware of any projects in the sector that represent this kind of opportunity for scale and grade to deliver a world-class discovery like a Las Bombas. Um, That certainly doesn't give us the, the conviction that it's there, but the probability and the evidence that we've seen to date is extremely rare. Um, speaking with many of the major mining companies that, that would look for projects like this, what I'm finding is um, these are extremely hard to find. And the few that are around the world that exist, um, you, you can't get access yet. And I think the two things you can't buy in life is time. We've got eight years of waiting for this project to come online. And the other one is social access, which uh, we've, we've done a remarkable job. We went outside the mold and we worked with the communities in a, in a special way where we brought agricultural programs into the Andes and we've got long-term sustainable partnership with them. And, and now they have red meat and they have agriculture at elevation in the Andes where they wouldn't have it before. And so this is rare for a junior to take this approach. Mm-hmm. However, we did it because the confidence of the project is so high and it's so target rich. So I, I think this, we, we stand out different from any of our competitors with the scale of the opportunity and uh, we have a great technical team as well. Why should retail investors pay attention to you focusing in on social access? Well, I think ESG is a massive movement as we've seen in the industry. Um, been part of a 5 million ounce gold discovery in Ghana and the money you make off of that performance of finding a mine, it comes and goes. But the people's lives you impact is forever. And so from our perspective, uh, we came in as experienced people that have found mines before and we've sold and we've learned how important the social aspect is. And as a family man with children and worrying about the future of the planet and impacting people with mines, it was something that not just myself, my entire board and my team really, really took serious from the beginning. It costs a lot of money. It took a long time to do it right. But it's something we're extremely proud of, whether we find a mine here or not. We've impacted lives for hundreds of years by bringing agriculture into the Andes. And that's something we are extremely proud of. And we're going to keep working towards and adding more and more programs. And it's important that the, the stakeholders and the local communities, they, be, they have to benefit. This is their backyard. And the responsible environmental standards that we're following are the highest. We, we don't use any chemicals. We're just going to drill. And, uh, and that's it. So, so yeah, it's been a huge factor. It's put us in a very good place for the communities and it's really going to be key to the asset performing if it is there for long-term success. Yeah. Lots to look forward to do for you. Um, what's your outlook for copper? Um, and if there's anything else that you'd like to share with our uh, viewers at uh, CEO.ca, go ahead. Sure. Uh, copper, um, well, by, by nature, I'm a, I'm a gold bug. I'm a silver fanatic, meaning I love silver, silver equities and high-grade silver, but I'm a copper bull. 
Uh, copper is the mo- one of the most common metals that exists on the planet, but it's also one of the most used. And this whole movement towards electrification, I think the world did not get the mining part right and how hard it is to find quality copper and how hard it is to get a quality copper mine of scale into production. A mine like this, if we find it, will take 20 to 30 years to make it to production because of the time it'll take to drill it, to build the social environmental aspect properly. And that's the new world we live in. Uh, the top 10 copper mines in the world, three of them will be actually expiring in the next 15 years or less. When you look at the other mines in the world, the large ones, they're getting to the late state or the past halfway, which means their big pits are now getting really deep. The cost of getting that metal out is going up. The average grade of copper has dropped significantly over time. When I started in the business, it was around 2%. Now it's at 0.5% around there. So copper is becoming a scarcity. It will not meet the demands of climate change that people are talking about, not even close to a mining perspective. So we go into deficit next year is the forecast. And I think copper is going to be a perpetual performer for the rest of my lifetime and many others to come. Um, counter argument is there's a lot of 0.3 copper. There's a lot of low grade copper in the world. And I agree with that, but the cost of bringing that online is exuberant and the risk of that cost is quite high. And if you bring on all these low grade copper mines, you're going to satisfy supply at a very slow pace because of the low grade nature of those mines. So I love copper. I think it is, you can, you can buy it and the next 20, 30, 50 years, it's going to continually perform over time. I don't think there's any shortcuts that can be made because of the scale of these mines and how much impact they have. But uh, it's the most needed element right now with our population, which has doubled in the last 30 years. So as we scale up our population and we modernize our cities and our infrastructure to take on climate change in a real serious matter, the number one metal that's going to be needed is copper. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.